what's the best way to get curve controls from this tiger? Well, there is actually a really simple way to do that. And it is actually a bit of a, an error in Blender, which might be fixed in the future. So this might not date very well. But in a nutshell, you can click on the grease pencil object that you've created, and you can simply convert that into a poly object. And by doing so, you create the controls that you need. Let's use this pore as an example. I'll take the pore over here. If I go to Object, Convert, I can do a poly curve conversion. So what happened? Let's click on the grease pencil object first and just move it out of the way. What's been left behind is the curve that grease pencil was using to draw the shape of the pore. So where are the claws? Where's this middle bit? That's all down to what you have selected in the dope sheet when you click convert. So let's go back a few steps. So we have our poor grease pencil object here. And if we select toe in the dope sheet, that tells the conversion operator to use that. So poly curve, click on the grease pencil object to move it out of the way. And now the toe is left over instead. So if I was rigging up this paw, which I will be soon, to get the controlling objects for it, I would simply export all these one by one. So I'd do the toe first. I'd then select the base. And then I'd select the claws. I'd move the grease pencil object out of the way and be left with an outline. An outline that can then become the controlling objects for these paws. And that is how we're going to create the controlling objects for this tiger. So I'm going to start with the pupils because that was where I was before. I'm going to click on the head and I'm going to come down and find the pupils. I've got pupils here, so I'm going to get them both at the same time. So with pupils selected, I'm going to go to object and I'm going to click convert polygon curve. There we are. Now I'm going to come back into the viewport, just drag that down a little bit. Click on the tiger's head and press H for high. I've been left with two eye controls. Now, I only want one and these two are joined together. So I'm going to go into edit mode, select box, and I'm going to select the pupil on the right. I'm going to press P for separate and I'm going to click OK. Notice over here, my collection was selected and I've now got two pupil controllers in there. This one, I'm going to call it dot L, no, dot R. This one, I'm going to call dot L. There we go, L, R. If we look at these, you can see that their pivot points are currently at the origin like this. So we know the steps that we're going to go through. So in pose mode, I'm going to select my eye and come down to the bone properties. And then we'll go into the viewport display and we'll select the custom object. This was pupil R. There we go. What kind of result do we have? It's lying flat on the floor and it's the wrong size. Step one, let's not change the size of the curve. Perfect. Step two, rotation minus 90 on the x-axis. There we go. Now they're facing the same way. Last step, go into edit mode, select the tail of the bone, shift S, cursor two selected. My cursor was already there, but never mind. Finally, we'll take the controlling object, let's have to come out of pose mode, and we'll right click and set the origin to the 3D cursor. There we go. Now they're right over the top of each other, and I'm finished with pupil R. Now onto pupil L. Select the bone, we'll find pupil L. We'll come down here, scale to bone length, minus 90 on the X. We'll select the bone, go to edit mode, click on the tail of the bone, take the 3D cursor there, come back out, select the curve, right click, set the origin to the 3D cursor, and we're done. So, as you can imagine, we're going to repeat that step now for a couple of other bones. It'll be pretty straightforward for muzzle, for head, and for any bones that are pointing upwards like this, that are just vertically pointing upwards. It'll be very, very straightforward. The ones that will cause trouble are the ears because they are pointing diagonal, so I suspect we'll have some rotation issues, but we'll deal with them when we get to them. I am, however, going to do this in a batch rather than constantly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, now that the basic idea should be quite clear. So where's the head gone, first of all? 
while I hid it before. So you can you can press Alt H to reveal anything that you've hidden. And in this case, I only had one thing hidden, so that was easy enough. But of course, over here there is the eye under the collection, so you can just click on that to open it. I'm going to select the head, and I'm going to start to do this a little bit more as a batch. So I know that I need a nose control, so that can be my first one. Convert poly. So I need the muscle. Is that the right one? Yes. Object, convert, poly. I need browse, object, convert, poly, convert, poly curve. My ears, I need ear L and ear R. Convert, poly, convert, poly, so on and so forth. We can turn this off just to see how things are going. Yep, going very well. Turn that back on again. And I'll probably come back and get anything else that I've missed. I've missed stripes. Poly. Now that I've got all of my curve controls, I might have to come back and get a few because I've probably forgotten some. I'm going to start to change the bones now. So I'm going to click on the armature, go to pose mode. I'll select the brow first and notice that all of the controls are still going into the control group because that collection is selected. So there's a lot of work there that I don't have to do. I've seen muscles got 001. Muscles got 001 on it, so I'll just take that off. Right, so first of all, brow and up here. And by doing this in batches, it just saves you going back and forth, back and forth from one space to another space, from one menu to another menu. So first up is brow. Now browse is a problem. So I'm going to have to go in there and sort that out. So let me turn off this and separate these brows. So tab, I'm just going to deselect this one, press P, and now that one is its own object. I'll then come to the F2 menu. This one is dot L. This one is dot R. There we go. Do I need to separate anything else? So I also need to separate the eye controls. So I'll just take this one here and I'll do separate, come back out, and this one can be i.l, and then that one can be i.r. Excellent, the nose is good and the muzzle is good. Back in here we go. I think I'll just leave the tiger objects turned off for now because I don't need to see them, and they do make it harder to distinguish between one thing and another. Let's do the brow. Into pose mode, select the brow, and we're looking for brow dot r. There it is. That's that one done. Now let's do the other brow. So we're looking for brow dot whoops, brow dot l. That's that one done. Now let's get the i, and we're looking for i dot r, and then we'll do this i. We're looking for I dot L. Right, now I can't see the muzzle through here, so I'll just need to turn on the wireframe mode. There it is. And I'm looking for muscle. I didn't bring the head, so I'll have to leave the head for now. And I don't have a nose controller, so I actually overlooked that. I don't need a nose anyway. Stripes. So I believe I said that was going to be my stripes. And we'll just type in stripes. There we go. Right, so I forgot the head. I'm going to go back and get the head now. There's my round head now. Excellent. I'll click on the armature, go to pose mode, grab the head, and type in head. Head. There we go. I noticed there was two heads there. Let's just have a look and see why that is. Ah, so I was looking for head 001, and that's because there is already a grease pencil object called head. So rather than calling it head 001, I'm going to just call this head underscore control. Now that I've done that, I'm going to come back down here and find the correct uh, head. Or I'll just type in actually head control. Right, now that I've batched my way through that, I've got everything in place. So I'll come back to the ears because the ears will present their own unique problem, I suspect. First step is I'm going to turn the visibility of the controllers off just so they're out of the way. No need to clutter up the screen. And I'm not going to go through each one and change these one at a time. I'm going to do them all at once. So I'm going to shift click each 
of the bones that have got curves on them. This big one on the floor is the head. The reason it's so big is because the head bone was scaled up quite a lot. So firstly, I'll shift select all of the bones. I'll hold down the Alt key. And when you do that, when you have multiple objects selected, it just means that anything that you transform or do over here in the menus will apply to everything instead of just one thing. So I'll hold down the Alt key and I'll come over here and I'll click on Rotation X. I'll let go of the Alt key now because I don't need to hold it anymore. Minus 90, Enter. And they all pop up. Now I'll hold down the Alt key again and I'll untick Scale. And they all scale to the right place. So that's that bit done. The last bit I need to do is going to have to be one by one. And that is changing the pivot point of the control curves to the tail of each bone that they are displaying for. We'll start with the muscle, which actually looks like it's already close. Turn on wireframe mode and select the tailbone of the muzzle. Shift S, cursor to selected. Back out. We'll turn on the controls. We'll click on the muscle control. Right click, Origin 2 3D cursor. Next we'll do the stripes. So the stripes are there. I'll click on the tail. Shift S, cursor to tail. Come back out. Click on the curve. Origin 3D cursor. That's that one done. Now we'll do the eye. Edit mode. There's the eye. Tail. 3D cursor. Get the eye control. Right click and to 3D. And I'll just follow through and do this for all of the objects. Needless to say, this is a very tedious, repetitive task. And tedious, repetitive tasks nearly always wind up getting scripted. So I suspect it won't be long before a script pops up somewhere if Blender don't address this themselves. A script will pop up where you click a button and all of this just happens for you because it is a procedure and it is a loopable procedure. So it makes sense to script it. Right. All of my bones have been turned into curves, except for a couple of outliers. Let's just turn the controls collection on and off. We can see the nose is disappearing because I never set a bone up for the nose. And we can see that the ears are disappearing because we're going to deal with them next. Because the nose doesn't have a controller, I'm just going to lose that. Now, let's deal with these ears and see what's going to happen. We'll go into pose mode, click on the bone, and come and do the usual steps. So ear, and this is going to be ear L. There we go. So it's down there and we'll minus 90 degrees that. There we go, and we'll change it to the right length. Lastly, we'll put the 3D cursor in the right place and change the pivot point of the object. There we go. As you can see, the ear is bent down there. The question is, why? Why is it bent down there? And the answer is because the head of the bone is pointing in that direction, which has translated to a rotation for the curve. So if I were to take this and return it back there, so it's pointing upwards as it was, as you can see, the curves are pretty much aligned. So it's a simple fix, and that is to manually select the bone in pose mode, come down to the viewport, and just rotate it on the right axis. And in this case, it's going to be the Z axis. And you just want to do it by eye, so it's roughly in the right place. We've landed on 54. Now that's going to come up a lot whenever you have bones that are pointing somewhere other than north. So we have this bone now sticking out without any kind of controller on it. And to make a controller, we'll need to come back to the controls menu. We'll turn the rig off temporarily so that we can see clearly which one is which, because as they get closer and closer visually, it's harder to tell what's your control curve and what is your rig. But we'll come in here. I'll turn on the tiger so I can see the tiger. and. I'm just going to use my lasso select tool here to just lasso around roughly the area that I want. I'm going to press P and separate. And now this has conveniently been called ear.l.001. So just take note of that. That convenience was not an accident. That's because I've been sticking to Blender's labeling scheme of putting a dot and then a lowercase l and then another dot and 001 
it can be very advantageous to work to Blender's labeling scheme because when happy accidents like that happen it saves you time. Now I'm going to turn the tiger back off again, turn the armature on and go into the pose mode. I'll come down to the bone and I'll find my ear, there it is, and I'll run through the same process as before. My tiger's starting to look pretty complete now. I've got control over the pupils, over the eyes, over the stripes. However, if I turn the tiger back on, it's still quite difficult to get hold of the right things because there's stuff overlaying it. To start with, these lines here, they are grease pencil lines. If I come up into this menu and turn off the wireframe, then they'll no longer be overlapping. Now, you could just leave them like this and all will be well. Or you could do a little bit of prep to tidy things up a little bit. So for example, these ears here, I'm not a big fan of them being right over the top of the tiger's head. And it goes for this one too. So I'll shift select them both. I'll come down here to the custom shape menu. And I think it's probably Z. I'll hold down Alt and I'll just move them back like that. I don't even think I'll move them back that much. I'll just tap the arrow so that they just step one pace backwards. And there we go. If for any reason you want to be able to see your controllers and they're obstructed by bits of grease pencil, you can always turn X-ray mode on when you're in pose mode and that will make sure that all of the controls are visible. Another thing we can do is scale these up slightly. So I'll click on ear 001 for both sides as well. And I'm gonna do a scale across them all. So I'll hold Alt, I'll click and drag down so that I've got all of the scales selected. And I'll just do a gentle scale. Now it's jumping up and down a bit too much, so I'm gonna hold Shift just to refine that. Otherwise, I'd rather the stripe controllers didn't stick out like that. So I think I'll turn the armature off temporarily and turn the controller collection on. I'll go into object mode and select these particular curves, go into edit mode, and with the lasso tool, I'm just gonna select the part of the controls that are sticking out and I'm going to delete those vertex points. And then I'll turn this back off again, turn the armature on, and as you can see, all of those curves have been snipped because these curves exist still and they are still editable. So you can make changes as you go along. So that concludes this video on how to set up control curves for your armature. The next video will be about how to set up a blink control so that the the blinking stages that I've created here in Grease Pencil are controlled by a bone under this armature object.